Hi everyone, today I bring you um, a great delight, uh, a great chest delight. Uh, this is round nine. Uh, obviously, Magnus Carlsen is seated with the Black Pieces, round nine at the Tata Steel Chess Tournament 2020, the 82nd event in this class at the Weich Weik Anze. Weich Weik Anze. So here we go. This is uh, Magnus Carlsen Black against, now I have to do research for this, um, uh, Elisria uh, Feroja. Okay, so uh, who is who is this player? Who is, we all know Magnus Carlsen, but who is this, um, I'm not going to keep trying to say his name, I'm still learning it. Uh, he is born the 18th of June 2003 and he is um, second highest um, ranked player for junior players in the world. Um, he is Iranian um, born and he's an Iranian chess prodigy and he got his, um, he won at the age of 12 the Iranian chess championships and he was grandmaster at 14. He's renounced his citizenship, if this has got anything to do with it, in December 2019, last year, of course. So this is round nine, and um, Magnus has the black pieces, and I'll just say Ali has the white pieces. So he's number two in the world. He's currently living in um, purportedly France, and he may take up the flag for France or for the US. So here is this game that was played on the um, January 21st, which is um, yesterday's day for New Zealand. So here we go, I'm going to bring you this game and it's a great delight and thank you for the photo to um, chessbase.com. I've sort of sneaked it off them, so I hope it's okay. Here we go. And I haven't got my border down, I've just noticed that my my screen backing but it's not about me chess isn't about me it's about um you know it's about these guys here fantastic isn't it to be um number two for the world and playing against magnus so here's this game so white opens with e4 now just to recap the time control is a hundred a minute a hundred minutes for your first 40 and 50 minutes for your next 20 and 15 minutes for the rest of the game so if it goes for a hundred and some moves you've also got the increments starting for move one with 30 seconds added um not manually but automatically by the clock's mechanism otherwise it'd be a great pain for an arbiter now I just want to give you one wee little um, one little uh, principle of mine uh, before we start this game is um, not I can't say I own it or have a copyright on it, but this ga um, this principle is um, don't give up too early. Even if your pawns or a piece down, don't give up too early because you can only lose that game of chess once. You can only lose a, a lost game once, so why rush it? And make your f opponent fight for it, unless you want to reserve your um, your tiredness and all that sort of thing. And, and I've had a lot of comments from people on um, Facebook and the like that have said, yes, well, with, um, was it uh, Karana versus uh, Anand, um, that... Anand had a really, really one position and uh, lost that duly um, because his opponent played on. So that's not the only reason, but here we go. I'm into five minutes already, so, or approaching my sixth. So here we go. So we have the classic moves of the Berlin, which this is um, classed as the Berlin defense. And the Spanish rile appears, or um, whatever I used to call it, or still do the rule appears. Um, and you can find some games from early, early on with him actually playing chess. 
about uh, maybe 17, um, 1700s or thereabouts or earlier or later. Here we go with d3 which is um, which is played against uh, the great world chess champion current and also blitz and rapid um, champion of the world Magnus Carlsen Black. So d6 to emulate um, White's move. So here we've got a pretty um, correct sort of um, standard sort of pawn formation, haven't we really? So the pawns are pretty simple to work our way around. So here comes c3 and a6. And the bishop has opportunity to play bishop c6 check, but doesn't. Um, White plays bishop a4. Bishop e7, very, very normal, um, and castles and castles. Is Magnus copying white? I think not. Rook e1, um, another move that's a classic thematic move to play in the Spanish. And here comes Rook e8, yet another one, and another copy move. I'm just joking. Knight bd2, which is a move that I even like to play for white or black. Um, bishop f8. b5, biffing the bishop away, and the bishop retreats to c2. It can also retreat to b3, uh, but often knight, b, knight c a5 um, asks it to go elsewhere. So here comes bishop c2 and here's bishop b7. Now everyone at home can play these moves, okay? So you can look or whatever like your Magnus Carlsen yourself because there are some moves other than the Berlin on move, um, on move, uh, is it four? Yeah, move four, four, black, um, now comes d4. Uh, knight b8 comes up shortly. So g6, which is the Breyer's move, by the way. Knight um, d4 and g6 and a3. So this is, um, this is in my way of looking at it, the move a3 here is to prevent maybe moves like e4 and knight, um, knight b4, maybe but I'm not completely sure. There goes that whistle. So here's knight b8. This is um, a thematic move that um, that Breyer um, introduced into master play. Now, the knight actually makes a move right back to its indigenous home native square by going back to b8, which is undeveloping. But this knight wants to swing into here and white has to watch out for this Pawn here e4 because this with um, the bishop along this diagonal and the knights got out of the way is now attacking this pawn on e4 sorry about that whistle so if white would now idly play knight f1 for example okay then black would merely win a pawn in my estimation with e4 and let's just say cd4, knight d4, or queen d4. Queen d4 might help. Uh, then we have knight e4, you see. And you can win this game of chess um, from here. So that's um, probably why white has played, um, is um, not going to play knight bd2, or knight f1 I mean. So we're going on with the main line. So d5 is quite normal for white players to play in the Breyer sort of Berlin setup, whichever one we're talking about. So c6, and that's just from my understanding of the openings, especially that being of the Spanish, which I quite like. So here we've got this knight swinging back into action. Um, swiftly back into the game and all of a sudden it has another influence again and and as um, Breyer would be very proud that this knight can swing here and also look to prevent um, too many pieces going away from the protection of e4 so here's a4 and queen c7 
and notice that Magnus has true to it form uh, now developed whereas white now is still com not completely developed yet but we can't hold that against this um, top player from the world I wonder who num uh, the second player for his class in the world I wonder who number one is from India I believe so here comes B3 and Rook E C8 so Black enjoys just being a little bit ahead in development. Uh, so here's Rook A2 and, and A5. Now, still White can leave their Bishop on C1. I've seen my friend um, talking about this, that a Bishop can stay on C1 if the bits get out, if the bits are all... Whatever, I'm just rambling. Okay, so Bishop A6 with obvious intent of bishop c4 okay so white defends that with knight e3 and then comes this knight c5 now white is having to look after this e pawn now and meanwhile still wants to develop okay so um and magnus um eyes up this a4 pawn believe it or not knight e3 knight b uh knight d2 and C D five, um, C D five. Some people might play Knight D five here. C D five, and Rook A B eight. Now look at this. Um, Black's just about primo with their placements of their pieces, and this Rook can, if it wants, swing into uh, attacking the E four square as well. Okay, the E four pawn on e4 and other so here's bishop a3 and queen d8 going backwards um but h5 rook a a1 and bishop h6 so black's pre all their pieces and also black has to look after this knight on f6 which is undefended if they move their queen off this wee diagonal So king g7, and here we have, is it knight f1? Yes. And then we have um, bishop h4, and then we have knight e3, bishop e4, knight e f1. Uh, then we have, what's the next one? Queen d7, I think. Oh, queen c7. Now we have g3 and hg3, fg3, bishop h6. This is the 82nd um, edition of this chess festival in northern Holland of its, of its history. So here is um, h4, queen d7. King g2 and so we can notice that here white has been attacked twice on a4 okay but white has bishop d6 thereafter because cancel because the um the king is now defending the knight on f6 of course so white plays king g2 and now black takes this pawn on a4 and I believe bishop a4 happened, queen a4, bishop d6, and guess what? Queen d4 happens. Now we're just attacking the knight on d2 twice, very primitively um, spoken. We're also able to play rook here, maybe. So what happens now, I don't like that mouse whatsoever, is what happens next is queen f2, and queen f2 check. King f2, and now can you find how white um, resigned after black's next move? So, can you find black's next move, which um, finishes off this position? Because there's things happening, I'll give you a clue. There's things happening with the protection of pieces and, their, and therefore abouts.
and that will be the end of the session which will be going just over 16 minutes for these people um yeah just over 16 minutes for watching and looking at these actual players so black plays a move that just um, causes white to resign on the spot black plays the following move bishop f1 and now the knight is loose of course because the the bishops are taking it so probably the best move is knight takes but then you see the red flag knight takes pawn check and knight takes bishop where um black is a clear piece up okay so that is the end of the session there are other variations rook f1 bishop takes knight and and so forth and maybe bishop e5 for white soon but i haven't looked into them nor has my intuition thank you very much i hope you enjoyed this game featured for you today bye to everyone and all the best with your chest no matter where it is in the world and be happy to um, join as a subscriber thank you very much